folks happy thanksgiving here comes video number two and we are talking about the seven quality tools and bit by bit we're going to cover all of the different seven quality tools and in the previous video i talked about the tension between demaic and demadvi and how in essence i really don't want to dwell on definitions i want to dwell on the fact that you need to measure so that you know that the output that you are creating has been successful and honestly, we're going to be using that plan, do, study, act cycle over and over and over again. You would have watched the Demaic video and said, well, wait a second, this is very similar to the PDSA cycle. And you're absolutely correct. Main thing that I want to get out of this, more so than the definitions, is that you have the problem solving skills to go in and use good measurement tools so that you know when your process is in control. And then be able to apply appropriate corrective action because you have measured things properly and been able to prioritize. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to discuss the role of ASQ in standardizing methods of measuring quality. You'll use a check sheet for tracking defects in a process. You'll determine the quality parameters worth measuring for your product or process step, and then you'll design a basic check sheet. And that is going to be an assignment for those of you who are following along with Niagara College's uh, um, project management and process engineering course. So, oh, W. Edwards Deming, he's gonna come out with lots of quotes, but I love that quote, our system of making inspective, which if applied to making toast would be expressed, you burn all scrape. Well, we're going to make some toast today. So I do want to revisit some of the slides from the previous one, and we're gonna go into applications mode today. So don't just burn toast. Let's take some time together, and we're gonna really investigate and think about toast and build out a check sheet as if we were at a toast factory because why do we talk about toast? Well, it's a pretty simple system, but honestly, it's it's um, about a very few steps involved, assuming that we're not making the bread from scratch. And I always say, if you can work with a simple system, you can add complexity as you go along, but let's start with simple systems so that you're not overwhelmed and then you have the capability of moving forward. So we have seen this slide in a previous slideshow investigate and measure where your problems are occurring. Dig into it. Don't just settle on, well, it's burnt because it's too hot. There could be other causes. And so make sure that you're digging in and resolving the right problem and not focusing your attention on the wrong answer. Use the appropriate measuring tool. And so today we're going to be using a check sheet and find and use that check sheet and analyze it properly in our PDSA cycle so that we know that we're focusing our attention on the right answer. PDSA. PDSA. This is gold. Use your PDSA mindset. So right now we're going to think about planning. We've got to think about why does toast burn within the systems that we're making our toast under. Then we're going to go about and do some study. We're going to, uh, in that planning stage, we're going to build out a check sheet. We'll go and collect some data. We'll then analyze it and we'll be able to make an action plan from that. PDSA. I would say write it on your forehead because it's going to be so important to know the success of your projects. So let's imagine we're making toast and I have brought you a picture of an impinging oven as you've, you've likely seen these. If you, if, you ha if you haven't seen one in industry, you've likely seen one in a hotel at a buffet because honestly, it's a belt with a toasting element inside here. Now the larger ones may have a gas burner and then it's using forced air to force air around the product that's passing through on a belt. And that product then is toasted or cooked and it's then conveyed out of the oven and onto whatever other systems need to be done, whether that's cooling or packaging or whatever. And so if we really think about this system, there are a whole bunch of different things that we could be and should be measuring to know if our toast is burnt or not. So the number one thing that we need to measure is what's the color of that toast coming off. And we may have a color specification that allows us to know that this toast is within specification or it is too burnt 
or it is undercooked. And so we need to measure the color of that toast. We could use color swap swatches, and we've talked about this in other classes, but you could have a color, just uh, color swatches on a laminated card that you know this if the toast is within this range, it is acceptable. And if it is outside of this range, it's either not cooked enough or it's cooked too much. You could be using a color meter, but you could be collecting this data and know that your product is scoring within one of these different categories. But that is not the only thing that we should be measuring, we should perhaps also be measuring the temperature of the toasting impinger, and perhaps we need to measure it at different points in the impinger. Perhaps there is some way that we can do some sort of calibration measurement to know what the temperature is on these different tubes of the plenum that's uh, pushing the forced air out. Oh, no, 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 I'm not going to edit that out, I'm going to come back. i got other things to do than edit my videos. Um, maybe it's the speed of the belt. So if the belt is going really, really fast, perhaps the toast is not dwelling in the toast, the toast impinger long enough. Or perhaps the belt is going too slow and the toast is dwelling in the impinger too long. So the temperature could be completely adequate, but if the toast is in there too long, it's burning. Another thing that you could be evaluating is the airflow. As you notice in an impinger, the airflow characteristics are really critical. And so for some reason, if one of these uh, tubes in the plenum were blocked, let's say it's a lower tube and you find that the color on the top of the toast is fine, but the color on the bottom of the toast is off, maybe these lower tubes are getting jammed up with toast crumbs. Maybe the toast tubes um, have been impeded by a product that has fallen into the plenum box that's down below. You do need to be evaluating not just the color of the toast, but some of these other parameters. And we need to really think fundamentally about how the processes work and how the equipment works to be able to know that we're measuring the right thing. So what on earth does this mean? We need to build out a tool to check each of these things. And so at this point, I'm just going to jump out. I'm not going to edit this out. I'm just going to jump straight out. We have a check sheet and I have shared this with all of you who are following along in the course with Knight College and honestly if um, these these check sheets have been provided by the American Society for Quality ASQ American Society for Quality has a wide variety of different tools that they have shared with people and actually the website is right here and the seven basic quality tools for process improvement. They have made them publicly available and you can download this yourself at this web page here. So you can download it. Those of you who are following along in the course have found this form in Blackboard. What on earth can we do with this? We can go into the check sheet weekly tab here and we can say what are the different defects that we're seeing perhaps so let's say we had color as one of the defects. Oh, no, I need to enable editing. And I may need to enable macros as well on this. Let's say defect one, it's color. And let's say too dark. Maybe defect two, let's blow this up a little bit more for you so that you can see it from the back of the room. Ha <laughs> you're all on screen. So maybe you're watching it on your telephone. Color, too dark color too light, temperature too high. You could go along and uh, in the end you're going to customize this to your system. So you may have temperature in zone one or temperature in zone two. You can define it all sorts of different ways. This is where that problem solving and creative thinking process needs to come into play. But you need to go along and decide belt speed too fast, belt speed too slow. What was the other defect that we said that was in there? Airflow. Airflow too fast. Airflow too 
Let's look. Now, a check sheet. Honestly, I remember when I worked in the Canadian Food Inspection Agency and I was out in a lot of different plants. Honestly, the quality team in many cases may be out actively doing measures. In other cases, if you have specialist Six Sigma um, black belts or green belts or yellow belts in your team, I have seen it in food plants where you'll have someone just walking around with a clipboard with this sort of form on it out there collecting data as they see it. And they may be out looking at reject bins or they may be out um, working with the quality team collecting this sort of data. In other cases, it's the actual quality team that's doing that sort of um, evaluation PDSA cycle or DMAIC cycle themselves. In the end, though, you need to figure out how are you collecting this data. So if it's color too light, too dark, maybe if you have, let's say you're focused on the impinger, but the outcome perhaps is being evaluated in an optical sorter. Perhaps you have an optical sorter on the line, or maybe you have someone who's just standing there who's been trained saying, if it's too dark, pull it off the line and throw it in a bin. You need to then go out to that bin and say, okay, Monday, end of the day, that bin had 20 pieces of toast in it. Tuesday, end of the day, that bin had 15 pieces of toast in it. Wednesday, end of the day, had 30 pieces of toast in it. Thursday, end of the day, I don't know. But you have to imagine these are the sorts of numbers that you're collecting. How would you, you do the same thing on color too light at the end of your optical sorter or at the end of your, um, if you have a, a technician out there on the line, how many pieces of toast are in that bin? Maybe it's 10, maybe it's five, maybe it's two, maybe it's one. Maybe you don't do anything on Friday. Maybe the line is down for sanitation on Friday. <laughs> I'm, I'm reducing my workload here. And vice versa, you're going to carry on collecting all of the numbers for the different things. So let's let's just walk through the, uh, the thought experiment on the temperature is too high. Well, how are you going to know if the temperature is too high? You could have a data logger on your impinger that is collecting data every five minutes or whatever. You could have someone out there going out on an hourly basis checking the temperature with a infrared gun. You could have someone um, checking the outcome temperature on the piece of toast with an infrared gun. There's all sorts of different ways of doing this. And again, that's part of your knowledge and leadership within a quality team that you can think through very specifically what is the important thing that should be measured relative to this piece of equipment and relative to the system and the product that's being made. Belt speed too fast, how are you going to measure that? You could measure it in toast per minute or toast per hour, um, and or it could be RPM. Maybe there's a dial that's uh, regulating the whole belt. Main thing is, again, figure out what your system does, and the equipment is unique but you have to use your problem solving skills to say, hmm, what's important and what could be causing, in this case, the burnt toast. Airflow, how could you be measuring that? You could be out there using an airflow meter. This one's a little bit harder to do because airflow is going to be embedded right within that system. But oftentimes, it, larger industrial impingers are going to have airflow meters. Um, in other cases, you may be having to get a portable handheld airflow meter. But the problem with an impinger is it's a closed box system. So how on earth do you get in there? You may have a lot of difficulty with this one. And so it may be something not that you're measuring airflow, but on sanitation at the end of the day, how many plenum vents were blocked? Or how many plenum vents were partly blocked? That may be an indirect measure that you're applying. Instead of measuring airflow, you could be applying an indirect measure. Main thing is, and actually I have a different example here of a check sheet that I filled out. Um, is this, no, that's not it. That's another tool that we'll do at a different time. Data point, oh, oh, where did it go? Oh, these ASQ tools are going to be fun and we're going to go through all of them at different points in time. So. 
we will have some fun with this. Okay, actually, yeah, I went and did mochi. Oh, surprise. I'm so obsessed with the mochi factory. So let's say here is my check sheet that I filled out at the mochi factory. And so we've got torn mochi dough, unsealed mochi dough, underweight portion, overweight portion, bubbled between the dough and the wrong ice cream. What's cool about this and why I like the ASQ tools is that immediately on this check sheet, it has jumped over into a histogram. And we will take some time and learn about how do we design histograms. That's another separate tool. But what I what I like about this ASQ tool is it's, it's really facilitated. First off, they have done the sorting by day. And honestly, you could be asking yourself once you've done some what we we're calling data stratification. We've organized what do we see about errors occurring on a per day basis. Well, let's jump back to our check sheet. We notice that on Mondays and Tuesdays, there's a reasonably high amount of defects in torn mochi and unsealed mochi occurring on that Monday, Tuesday, and then suddenly it drops. And we have to really dig in and ask, what happened between Monday, Tuesday to Wednesday? Was there some sort of preventive maintenance? I'm leading you on here. Why? Because we're actually uh, giving you hints about um, Ishikawa or root cause analysis. We're asking those questions, what happened between Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday that is slightly different? Perhaps we had um, someone off on those two days who would be doing maintenance and calibration on the equipment. Or maybe we noticed that it's a dough related issue. Maybe we had some formulation issues on the mochi dough and that the formulation that we ran Monday, Tuesday, maybe we were shortening an ingredient and we substituted an ingredient. You have to really dig in and ask yourself those questions. Why were things occurring? And then go and investigate. I don't want to jump away from this check sheet, but all of these seven quality tools really relate back to each other. The histogram is one of the quality tools, and I do want to take time and actually walk you through how do you do a histogram from scratch. But what I like about this, this ASQ check sheet is that it's already linked out. So something occurred Monday, Tuesday that's causing those errors, and then they were alleviated. But look, the errors crept up towards the end of the week. Maybe we have a maintenance guy coming in and he does his prevention and maintenance schedule on Tuesday night to Wednesday, and that piece of equipment is calibrated and in best working order, and then as the wear and tear of that equipment occurs, the errors creep up. So if prevented and maintenance is occurring at this point, maybe we need to increase the maintenance on this piece of equipment. We're jumping into that Ishikawa, but we're using our problem-solving mindset to be able to think about what occurred differently. Another type of analysis that's often done is a bar chart, and that's where we can visualize how frequently an error was occurring. And so if I just blow that up a little bit more, the bar chart, and we will take time and design our own bar charts from scratch, but in the ASQ tool that they have provided the web link for and the template for, they do a, some of that analysis automatically for you. And I, and I actually want you to dwell on thinking through the problem solving aspect of using a check sheet right now, more so than the computer programming and the use of Excel. We will get to that next week. Right now, think about the problem solving side. This bar chart's nice, and we are able to quickly identify that torn mochi and unsealed mochi dough were the most common problems. And if we go into what's called a Pareto chart, a Pareto chart helps us prioritize which of these defects occurred the most frequently. And when I talked in the previous slideshow about prioritization, when we start to measure how frequently things are occurring or what does that occurrence look like, we can start to prioritize. And so we know there's something related to the mochi dough specifically. We notice that the issues that we are, are, are seeing are most likely associated with the dough. So do we go back and look at the dough formulation and identify if 
it was something related to formulation or is it something related to the dough extrusion and the equipment that's extruding that dough or mixing that dough prior to going to the extruder? We notice that it's something about the dough specifically that we need to focus on. We jump back to this, this toast scenario. We can see the same histogram. The histogram is giving us frequency of error over the days. We notice that we're getting too dark toast and not too light toast more frequently. Pareto chart, same as the bar chart in this case, you can take the time and build out a check sheet that is relevant to the product that you are working on. And that's actually going to be your assignment for this week. So let's jump back to the PowerPoint instead of, instead of this. Thinking about check sheets, you really need to spend the time I'm on the front end in the planning piece to think about what are the types of errors that could be occurring so that you know that you are measuring them. That's really the bigger and harder part along with the how do we actually go about doing that measure. I know you have taken a quality control class um, previously and that course focused a lot more on measurement and not so much on statistical process control. We're going to take the time and dig into that statistical process control right now, but I need you to think really, really creatively about what are the different scenarios in that product and how do I measure it? All right, have some fun figuring this out, and I know there's going to be an assignment and you'll be able to get some feedback because feedback is an important part of a PDSA cycle. And that will allow you to really think about this. It's hard to contextualize unless you actually have a process in front of you. So for those of you who are following along in the course, I will encourage you to do it on one of the projects that you're actually functionally working on. But think about it as a creative process that you really need to dig in. All right, take care and we'll talk to you soon.